Hey YouTube, today we're going to be doing an unboxing of the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT. So this is the launch day for the new 7000 series RDNA 3 GPUs from AMD. So like I said in the live stream, I was going to try, originally I tried to get the XTX. Um, you can see here that I don't have that, I have the XT. So unfortunately, um, I went to Micro Center this morning. I didn't wait in any line, but I showed up like probably... 45 minutes to an hour after the store had opened and they had already sold through all of their XTX cards I think when I got there they only had the power color Power color and sapphire were the two and then the only really one the only real option I had was power color at that point But they're all reference cards, so it doesn't really matter which uh, brand you choose Although I mean, if you do need to do an RMA you would be going through the partner um, as opposed to AMD for these warranties for, for these particular units, even though this is a reference card. Now, but anyway, let's go ahead and open it up, and then we're going to talk about who who this GPU is, who I think this GPU is for um, in terms of the target buyer, because I do kind of think that this GPU got a lot of uh, negative feedback from a lot of viewers and reviewers. So let's go ahead and open that box up. So just look down here. So it just opens up like that. Um, so the package is pretty standard. It's a lot of foam. Uh, I think it's just, yeah, it's all in one case in foam. Or it's pretty far down in there. That's it. Let me see if there's anything else. Uh, no, it's literally just the card. There's no pamphlet or anything. So move this off to the side. So there it is, the XT, or the XT, and I said XTX. Um, so I'm a little disappointed that the supply, um, because they were supposed to have a lot of supply, all the rumors are supposed to be believed, but they basically sold through their entire day one inventory for the XTX within an hour. I think like if you were trying to buy it online, as far as I know, Best Buy hasn't even listed them yet. Um, but there we go, so you can see there's the Radeon logo. This unfortunately doesn't light up. That's very disappointing. This card, I think, would be slightly better. Uh, it would look better in the case if the Radeon logo lit up. Uh, the previous generation 6000 series, the Radeon logo lit up. So, it is a normal sized card, seeing it in person. You can see how it compares with the other cards I have in the background there. So I have a few of these older generation cards. Um, it is kind of, uh, let's see if it can stand up. It can kind of stand up, it's a little bit wobbly. Uh, but there it goes. So just kind of comparing it here. So with the GTX 1080, uh, this is the 1080 and 1080 Ti, and 1070 and 1070 Ti Founders Edition model. You can see it is thicker. It is about two and a half. You can see it kind of extends there, whereas this one is flush with the case bracket um, so it's slightly taller um, but that's the 1080 so why do I have these cards out here you might ask because I think that if you have any of these cards except for maybe that one over there uh, these three in particular so the 1080 or the 1080 Ti or the Vega 56 or 64 so this is Vega 64 you can see um, the card is a little bit taller than Vega. Um, and it's also thicker because this is a standard blower style. Although this did have the dual BIOS for a reference card. And the Radeon logo did light up. So it is very disappointing that that Radeon logo doesn't light up. Um, I do think though that if you're on Vega or 1080, this is a worthy upgrade, especially if you're on a 1440p monitor. Um, I really feel like the 7900 XT for 1440p, this is still good value. It is a bit pricey. It would be nice if this was 100 to a, maybe even 200, but about 100 to 150 dollars cheaper than what it is at launch. I feel like this would be a, a no-brainer for 1440p high refresh. Like for example, 144 hertz, 165 hertz, or even 1080p 240 or 360. However, I really don't think that you should be buying a card that has 20 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, just for 1080p gaming. So I really think this is the sweet spot for this GPU in particular is going to be 1440p. I really think that that's kind of where 
it's uh, meant to be or intended and the XTX model would be the 4K uh, model. Um, I guess additional models that you could upgrade from or who is a good target audience is if you're on Radeon 7, this is a Radeon 7, uh, this would be a good upgrade path because Radeon 7 was typically paired up with 1440p when it launched. So if you're someone who doesn't really care about 4K, you have no intention of going to a 4K monitor in the future, I feel like that basically all you got to do is upgrade to this and you're pretty much set for the next several years. Um, 20 gigabytes of VRAM for 1440p is going to be a very, very good amount longevity wise. So I hate to use the word future proofing, but if you're going to stay at 1440p or if you recently just bought a 1440p monitor um, and then you realize that your graphics card is no longer adequate, um, this is kind of the best deal you can get right now if you're looking for brand new generation hardware and you don't want to pay the NVIDIA tax for something like a 4080 and you don't really want to wait for, and see how that uh, 47, that rumored 4070 Ti, aka the fake 4080, is going to play out because that only has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. This has 20, and this is like roughly, you know, it's within 10% or so of the 4080. So, yeah, it's like about 10 to 15% slower depending on the title, depending on ray tracing or not, um, against the 4080. So I really feel like the the 4070 Ti is probably going to slot in like right behind this card. Um, kind of like how the 3070 slotted right in behind the 6800. So I really feel like the, the naming on this card is kind of weird. I feel like they should have called this the 7800 XT and the 7900 XTX should have just been the 7900 XT. Um, but that's just kind of my two cents on what I think they should have done with the naming convention. Um, but overall this card does have a decent amount of weight to it despite being pretty compact. So I can tell it's going to be cooled adequately. This card also uses less power than the XTX, so it's probably going to be fine. You know, standard dual 8-pin. Um, I will be doing a first impression. We will be doing a live stream um, playing games like uh, Crisis Core Reunion, which just came out today, and testing it with this graphics card, as well as some other games as well. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Um, but you don't need to worry about upgrading your power supply, assuming you already had something like a 2080. I feel like if you're on 1080, 1080 Ti, 2080, 2080 Super, even 2080 Ti, um, this is a really, really good graphics card for a 1440p uh, monitor um, swap. So, uh, I guess people might ask about, what about the 3080? So this is the 3080 Ti. Um, this one, I don't really recommend upgrading from. There were a couple of people that were asking me, like, should they get the 4080 or the 7900 XTX if they already have a 3080? My answer to them is no. If you have one of these, either the TI or the non-TI, I would just sit this generation out. I feel like if you're on 30 series, or, or if you're on AMD 6000 series, um, you're probably gonna wanna sit this generation out, either the 40 series from NVIDIA or this new 7000 series from AMD. So that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you guys found the info useful. Uh, and stay tuned for benchmarking videos and all that kind of stuff in my first impressions and reviews and that sort of thing. So if you like this content, please leave a like. It really does motivate me to keep making videos like this. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.